In this session, you will understand how to manage transportation of goods and the use of dates in the shipment functions. With Sage X3, you have several functions available to help you manage the logistics events occurring during the transportation of goods. You will also review the process flow that has been available since Update 9 and overview of the new features available in version 11. Now, beginning with the transportation process, there are many new benefits. You have the ability to track goods during the transport between suppliers and buyers. You can update the real quantities before the actual receipt and know the real expected receipt date. And finally, using the new pre-receipt feature, you'll be able to simplify the receipt entry. Now, the key features we will see in this session are estimating a new expected arrival date on the shipment, which will automatically recalculate a new expected receipt date for the sites involved in the shipment. Now let's first review the transportation process available in Sage X3. Now here's an example of a storekeeper who receives a merchandise. He could do a pre-receipt for a set of multi-sites, multi-orders at the same time in order to update the expected quantities and receipt date. This can be done at different times between the PO creation and the supplier receipt creation depending on the customer's organizational setup. Now there are different possible use cases. The creation of a pre-receipt can be done based on the supplier information upon the truck departure as described in this case one. Or it can be done upon check count of the product quantities when unloading the boat to load the truck as described in case two. Or it can be used as an administrative receipt when the package is not open yet. This would allow us to change the actual quantities received when creating the supplier receipt. Now the function shipments is key on the transit transportation management. This function allows you to know which goods are coming from your vendor and the receivable quantities and have the ability to track all transports. It's possible to have in one shipment different goods from different purchase orders, different suppliers, and different sites from the same company. Now, when using shipments, the receipt is done by picking shipment instead of purchase order. Now, as a shipment can group PO lines from different receipt sites and suppliers, only the shipment lines related to the current receipt site and supplier are available for picking. Now, in this example here, the forwarding agent responsible for the transportation organization sends the information regarding the shipments to the buyer to monitor the possible delay and missing goods. Now for a containers function, it allows you to track the container ID and identify the contents. Now this is when using containers, the shipment and the receipt are created by picking containers. A container groups multiple PO lines. The freight and volume of the purchase quantities defined on those PO lines will be compared to the capacity defined for the container. Also, there's a transport function which allows you to track the different events during the transportation such as delay, price of arrival, date of arrival, and more. Now, when the transport function is not used, the tracking of the shipment dates and user steps can be done directly in the shipment function. Also, the document management can be done directly on the shipment function as well. The benefit in using the transport is to be able to track and manage this information once for multiple shipments from different companies sharing the same vessel, for instance. Now, once a transport exists, the transport information will prevail on the shipping information. Also, there's a shipment pre-receipt function, which allows you to perform a count to eventually declare some of the goods as lost and update the expected receipt date to take into account possible delays. This can be done when the vessel is in port during the unloading of the stock before the final transport by road is completed. In this example, you can mix peel lines from different suppliers in the same container. You can also mix containers of different capacities in the same shipment. Now, the PO lines involved in the same shipment share the same arrival place, and so the final receipt site can be different but still part of the same company. Now, the transport allows you to group several shipments 
from different companies when they share the same physical transport. Hence, they share the same dates and the same destination or arrival places. The one thing you have to define is the shipment containers function, which enables you to define a shipping container dimension and capacity. Now, in order to control the, the container capacity, this information is mandatory. You also define the place function, which allows you to define the physical location with an address. Such places can only be a departure, arrival, or receipt site in a transportation journey. When a place is linked to a site or a supplier record, the related address is defaulted. You can enter a release time in days. This time will be accumulated to the transport lead time in the arrival date calculation of the shipment. This can be useful when considering time needed to go through customs, for example. You also define the transport lead time function, which enables you to define a transport duration in days from a departure place to an arrival place according to a different transport type, like air, sea, railway, and so on. Now the lead time can also be customized depending on the carrier if the different carrier doesn't have the same route. You also define the tracking template function. Now this is used to define a list of tasks to complete during the shipment or during the transport. Now the list is a template that can be modified when loading on the shipment or transport document. Now monitoring a correct expected receipt date allows you to provide a reliable information to the re to reorder process and hence to have more accurate results. Now we provide an X3 calculation of dates based on predefined lead times. Now, in this example, the goods are transported by boat from China and delivered to San Francisco. They are then sent to Seattle site and to the Washington site. The transport lead time is not the same for each, as you can see. Now, if a arrival date of the boat is rescheduled to two days later, the expected receipt date in Seattle will be calculated or recalculated to the 11th of March. Now, one day later, when taking into account the road transportation lead time of one day by road between San Francisco and Seattle, the expected receipt date in Washington will be recalculated to the 13th of March. Now, this is because the transport lead time is three days to reach Washington and San Francisco via roadway. Now, since version 11, dates and places are also managed for companies that don't want to create a transport record. The expected arrival date is calculated based on a departure date and a transport lead set between the departure place and the arrival place. And as explained before, the expected arrival date will be used to calculate the expected receipt date on each site. The actual arrival date entered here will prevail on the expected arrival date when recalculating the expected receipt date on each site. In case of delay, the shift entered here will automatically recalculate the expected receipt dates on the sites. So here you can see the transport lead setup function. The lead time between the Shenzhou and Berlin is 36 days for multi-model transport. And here is how the arrival date has been calculated. The 16th of February plus 36 days is the 25th of March. And as a lead time between Berlin and the receipt site FR021 is one day. That makes the expected receipt date is the 26th of March. Now, as the transport information prevails on a shipment information, the expected arrival date and shift to apply will recalculate the expected receipt date on each site for all shipment lines and all related shipments. Here you can see the departure place at Shinzu, which must be set up as a location in the place function. And the arrival place Berlin must be set up as a location as well. Now this is a reminder of the existing management and not a new feature. But this is important to understand when using stock replenishment process. Shipment records don't generate records in orders table, but related to the POF quantities, 
which are split to match the shipment's information during the MRP process. In this example, the PO line is assigned to three shipments. One shipment will be arrived between the PO line receipt date and two other after. The total quantity shipment is actually higher than the order quantity. As a result, the projected stock in pink here is calculated by MRP will consider the stock to be available according to the shipment quantities and dates. So 40 units will be available on the 26th of May, 50 units will be available on the 11th of June, and finally 20 units will be available on the 1st of July. The same logic will apply upon statistical reordering such as ROP. Note that the PO lines attached to the shipment records cannot be modified by the replanning analyst. Now here, the PO lines associated to the shipments can easily be identified thanks to the symbol displayed on the workbench line. The PO lines breakdown can be viewed using the workbenches and the action menu shipments on the line. Now this action opens a new screen presenting the shipment information actually used by the MRP calculation. And now you understand the possible flows and how to manage the transportation of goods using X3. You also have learned receipt dates, how they're calculated based on the shipment information and their impact on the MRP processing.